Uh, you know, Gary, we do a lot of weird, goofy things here at Kind of Funny, and I would say this is uh, among the top things we've ever done. Uh, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to go to uh, the official Joe Biden campaign island on Animal Crossing. We are debuting it. It is called Biden HQ. Welcome back, everyone. Today for this video essay, I will be focusing on Greg Miller, a so-called comedian who runs Kind of Funny who has gotten himself into trouble trying to influence his fans on who to vote for. But before we get any further into the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more video essays like this. Greg Miller is a gaming YouTuber who used to work for IGN, so it's obvious that he has an annoying personality. Last year, during the US election, the gaming YouTuber had tried to influence his younger audience's thought process into voting for Joe Biden. I don't care who you vote for, forcing this stuff in front of your audience is completely manipulative. All the evidence first starts on Greg Miller's Twitter account, the first tweet of significance was a pinned comment on Greg Miller's Twitter account saying, No matter how you feel right now, angry, sad, embarrassed, use it as fuel. F Donald Trump. This man won't condemn white supremacists, so we'll condemn him. Tweet that you're voting for Joe Biden. Show that you won't stand for another four years. This was the first example of Greg trying to influence his audience to vote for Joe Biden. Next he said, I don't want to hear that you don't have a following. It doesn't matter if you have two or two million. We have to be vocal. We have to stand up. We have to grab the wheel and show that this country is and what it can be. Not gonna lie, that's pretty cringe. This promotion on his Twitter account wasn't the only way he forced a political agenda down his fans' throat. Greg Miller, on the same day as these other tweets, which was on August the 31st, 2020, first the NRA posted that if Joe Biden wins, he will destroy our Second Amendment and America will be unrecognizable. Greg Miller quote tweeted it and said, Please vote for Joe Biden. He thinks his fans will blindly believe him without explaining to his fan base why they should vote for him basically treating them like sheep, further emphasizing my point on him manipulating his fans and audience. On September the 24th, Greg Miller once more said, I've asked you to vote in a lot of goofy polls. The 2020 election isn't one of them. Regardless of how you feel about a two-party system or politics as usual, I'm asking for a favor. Please vote for Joe Biden. Clearly, right here, he is still treating his fans like children, and he knows he can get away with it. Once more proving my point that Greg Miller manipulates his audience into voting for Joe Biden. Lastly, on the 23rd of October later that year, Greg Miller simped for Joe Biden when he announced that he donated $43 to Joe Biden, which was a trash flex if it was meant to be one. Furthermore, he tried everything to shove his political agenda down his fans' throats. He has stopped doing this since last year. But this isn't the deepest he went to make his fans vote for Joe Biden. On to our next part, Biden Island. On October the 16th, a massive bombshell was dropped. Greg Miller partnered with Joe Biden's campaign to promote Joe Biden Island in Animal Crossing. He's basically advertised a political campaign in a game which is a new low for him. The tweet read, Big news, we've partnered with Joe Biden's campaign to be the first to show off the official Joe Biden Island in hashtag Animal Crossing New Horizons and we're doing it live Friday morning on Twitch. 
Then out of nowhere, he tagged the AOC and said, let me know if you want us to swing by your island after. This sounds like he's trying to flirt with her or something. I, I, I can't tell, it's just cringe. And to deepen the wound, she didn't even reply underneath. That same day, IGN promoted him, since he was associated with the company. IGN posted a tweet saying, kinda funny co-founder, Greg Miller and Rogue One screenwriter Gary Witter have partnered with the US presidential candidate Joe Biden to show off his Animal Crossing island. Underneath this they had a link to the articles titled Animal Crossing get a tour of Joe Biden's island this Friday. The caption says get your first look at the official Joe Biden island. Kinda funny co-founder and IGN alum the word alum is an informal reference to either a male or female graduate. Greg Miller and screenwriter and animal talking Scary Witter have teamed up with the United States presidential candidate Joe Biden's campaign to show off the official Biden Island in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Miller and Witter will be the first to show off Biden Island tomorrow, October 16th at 11am PT slash 2pm ET slash 7pm BST on Twitch TV slash kinda funny games and the tour will take place live in game. This showcase takes place only a little over two weeks away from the 2020 US presidential election on November the 3rd 2020 and is another example of these campaigns adapting in a world still impacted by COVID-19 pandemic as well as taking advantage of the current and popular forms of entertainment. Joe Biden's island is another example of celebrity making a home for themselves in Animal Crossing New Horizons. IGN recently hosted a celebrity island tours series where we had such stars as The Last of Us Part 2's Laura Bailey, What's Good Games' Andre Renee, Marvel's Shang Chai's Simu Liu, WWE's Xavier Woods and Gary Witter himself. I will give my opinion on this and say that there should be no advertising in games and that politics should not be forced in a video game. Apparently, what I just said is too controversial, which is deeply saddening that people are this obsessed with politics that they force their own audience to agree with them and make them vote for a certain candidate. The next day on the 17th of October, Greg Miller announced on his Twitter page to come see the debut of the official Joe Biden Island in Animal Crossing with Gary Witter and me. While Greg Miller is likely being paid for this, so I will admit there is a good reason for him to put this political opinion in front of his fans' faces, but this only makes him seem more untrustworthy and makes him look like a person in it only for the money, which is not a good look. Now for the part we've all been waiting for, is the opening of the official Joe Biden Island. Hosted by Greg Miller himself. At the end of this stream, we'll give out the dream code so you yourself can go and be a part of it and see what is up with it. Obviously, uh, it's quite the honor to be a part of this, to go and do this stuff and have a, uh, you know, see what's up with uh, Biden Island in all its glory, right, Gary? I'm, I'm excited. This is really cool. Now, uh, Gary, you're an Animal Crossing aficionado, right? Uh, I am. Uh, what do you look for in a good promotional island because of course joe biden did not create this island <laughs> joe uh, obviously has a campaign staff uh, that is jumping onto the animal crossing craze what do you look for in a good promotional island you know this will actually be the first promotional island i've i've ever been to i'm not usually into these like corporate you know activations and things like that a lot of them strike me as a bit uh, cynical and money grabby but this one obviously is a very uh, special case in the service of a very good cause so um, and I've heard some I've heard some very interesting things about just how much work they've put into making this this uh, Biden uh, island a really cool place so I'm excited to see it for myself well you know right um, of course how much work it takes to make an Animal Crossing island it's not something oh. you can just whip up overnight right and be into you got to get out there and do it so Greg Miller doesn't seem to be as bad as I thought Gary Witters explains how he's not in it for the money I don't know about Greg Miller because he never mentions if he is or if he's not. 
Apparently, both of them think the politicians are an exception for advertising and promotion. Let's say if Trump wanted to sponsor them or something, I don't think they would accept the offer. Because Greg Miller always mentions how he wants everyone to vote for Joe Biden. So when they mention how it's special that the US president came to them, is a lie. I think they would refuse any other offer with a president that has different opinions to them. This just further proves that they didn't do it in good faith. Even though they weren't in it for the money, they were there to push a political agenda on their fans. But Greg Miller did say some pretty interesting things during the live stream. It's kind of yeah, that was Biden. obviously yesterday but one of the big Twitter responses to the announcement of like, oh yeah, look at this, trying to get in there and stuff. It's like, it's just a cool thing to reach out to voters that are trying to support in any way they can, right? And I think even though it's, it, it's to some, it's incredibly goofy to get a Joe Biden sign and put it in your Animal Crossing front yard. It wasn't to me. I went and did that a long time ago to get, you know, official Joe Biden merch over here from the thing to match the, the actual no, merch absolutely. I'm wearing. This is sad. It's like hearing someone brag about buying dream merch. I will be visiting this island later and grabbing some of that. Merch. And like, that's the big thing about it, right? Is I think, you know, uh, if I can get, you know, not on a soapbox, any stretch of the imagination here, but one of the things that I know happened when we announced this stream was obviously people were like, oh my God, I'm so I get texts. Oh, it's so cool that you're doing this. Oh man, but I'm sorry about the comments. And it's like, the comments are a fraction of the people. They are the vocal minority, right? Like I've seen over and over again since we started uh, being very vocal and supporting uh, Joe and supporting uh, this movement, people saying, thank you for taking the stand. Thank you for saying something. And I think that negativity and trying to mock things and calling things cringy is the way people try to dominate the conversation and sway it from the real issues and keep you into a place where like, oh, may maybe I shouldn't speak up about this. Maybe I shouldn't talk about this. I like how Greg Miller is thinking that Biden supporters are oppressed, even though Biden got voted in afterwards. And Greg Miller tries to say that the people disagreeing with him are negative. Then he says that they're trying to sway stuff from the real issues. And fun fact, it gets worse from here. Uh, I'm Greg Miller. I've said this before on our podcast, and I'll say it again right here, right? Like, a lot of you have tuned to me for video game uh, recommendations uh, to go through my journey with cancer, uh, to hear me talk about all manners of my life, and you respect my opinion enough there. I understand that for some people, you don't want to vote, or it's just not your thing, or, you know, whatever. I don't care about either candidate. I'm asking you a personal favor to please, if you feel either of those ways, go vote for Joe Biden. Uh, I'm asking you to do that for me as your friend. I like how the last thing he says is as your friend. We're going to prove later on in this video that he does not respect his connection with his audience at all. As I always talk about, uh, you know, I watched the town halls last night and Gary, it's literally night and day. And you talk about the White House not having walls up around it. I just want to be able to respect the president again. I just want to look to that office and understand that there's an actual adult in it. That was some very poor choice of words, calling Biden an adult. I promised at the beginning of the video that I wouldn't be biased, but I really want to show how poorly Greg Miller did this all. I'll be grabbing a clip from Sky News Australia. I know I did a video on the UK one in the past, how I didn't agree with them, but this one is biased in a way, but they're just covering points that we've already spoken about. The video is titled, Joe Biden is now an international embarrassment. Not only did Biden's disastrous execution of the Afghanistan withdrawal see hundreds of American citizens abandoned in an Islamist hellhole, but he left the terrorists who now run that Islamist hellhole tens of billions in military equipment that they are now proudly parading, including Black Hawk helicopters, armoured vehicles, and an arsenal of weapons, including American M16 rifles. Uh, the Islamist extremist victory parade, I think we're bringing you some footage of it here in Kandahar, Kandahar is an indictment on the Biden administration who only a few weeks ago assured the world that the Taliban wouldn't overtake the country in a matter of days. The Taliban victory parade featured terrorist fighters standing on top of a, a long line of captured Humvees and other tactical vehicles 
while a Black Hawk helicopter circled ahead. Since the Afghanistan catastrophe, a massive win for America's enemies, including Iran, Russia and China, Biden has continued to embarrass the US on the world stage. There was this dopey performance with new Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. Yet another chapter in the beautiful story of the friendship between our two nations, the United States of America and the Jewish and democratic state of Israel, both of us who seek to do good and need to be strong, both of us who are... <laughs> Never mind how tired and uninterested he looked in front of the cameras. The reason I showed this clip was to prove that politics isn't night and day like Greg Miller just explained. It's quite obvious that Greg Miller hasn't done any research. He could be watching one bias news source. And I think, you know, one of the things uh, Vice President Biden said last night that resonated with me, right, is that uh, the words of the president matter. And that, I think, is the long and short of it for me, because we could go on another four hours talking about this, that, and the other on any other side of what's going on. But in the long haul of this, right, is that there needs to be someone I believe in or trust in that house again. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Greg, and that's why I'm so glad you asked me to do this and why I immediately uh, jumped at the opportunity to do it. Uh, to your point, you know, I, as you, I'm a bit of a news junkie. I've always got like the cable news on in the house. I like to follow the news and what's happening in the world. And recently, I've had to stop doing that. I have an eight-year-old daughter at, at, at home, and like, how, I don't know how this happened. But we now somehow live in a country where I, I, I have to turn the TV off when my when my kids in the room if the president's on TV. You don't have to turn off the TV. You're just choosing to because you don't want your daughter to have a different opinion to you which is petty and sad at the same time. Like how, like how far have we, we fallen that that has become the case? I would love for my daughter, and hopefully she'll be able to do this again very soon, um, to look at the president on TV and see that as something hopeful and optimistic and aspirational instead of just depressing and disgraceful and embarrassing. Uh you know what else is embarrassing? The fact that you two are manipulating your audiences to vote for Joe Biden, failing to give evidence and research to back up your points, basically treating your audience like they're stupid. Um, and I really, really hope that we can get back to those days sooner rather than later. I, 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 I as you know, Greg, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country uh, 25 years ago uh, and it welcomed me and it's been great to me. I made a family here, a career here, I made a life here. Um, I love this country so, so much, and so it's so deeply upsetting to me to see the, 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 what it's been put through these last few years, it's this disgrace, this embarrassment. I so desperately want to get back to something like normal where we can, where we can feel good about uh, this country again, and I'm very, very optimistic that starting in January, uh, we'll be able to do that. He's using the fact that he's an immigrant for sympathy points, and the fact that he is having a huge effect over your life is sad. He's basically living in your head rent free. And the only way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is if you get out and vote this November. Remember, you can go to IWillVote.com. You can make your plan there. Of course, there's Vote.org. There's Gamers.Vote. There's a million different resources for you to get out and make your voice heard. Of course, uh, you know, the one thing I always talk about is... Uh, you know, I get a lot of it of like, oh man, keep politics out of games. I follow you for this, blah, blah, blah. Of course, like I say, that's people trying to shout you down and make your make you feel like your opinion doesn't matter. Once again, he's making it seem like Biden voters are oppressed. Then he makes fun of people saying keep politics out of games. Mate, just because you play games 24-7 on your dying channel doesn't mean we all have to have fights over who to vote for. Greg Miller is what I would refer to as political obsessed, meaning the only thing they think of is politics and how wokeness is great. You saying that is enforcing negativity because everyone is fighting if there's politics in games, you idiot. Just look at Twitter. 
That's an example why politics don't belong in games. Everyone is fighting 24-7. Each one of you, uh, your opinions matter, and you need to make those known, and you need to speak those out so it doesn't seem like uh, the negative is outweighing the positive all the time. And Absolutely. I personally think that, you know, the easiest way to do that is to vote for Joe Biden this uh, November. Obviously, uh, we're in October. Right? So you think voting for Joe Biden will immediately make the world a happy place? I don't think so, mate, when you're running a dead gaming channel. Anyway, on to our next part, The Aftermath, featuring Combo Con. Now begins our section on The Aftermath. The aftermath of this wasn't necessarily bad, but it wasn't necessarily good either. The bad news was, it sparked cringe videos. For example, this one right here. Joe Biden has an animal crossing island! Exclamation mark. You know what? Manifest it, Joe. Get it. We're going to the White House. Joe Biden has an animal crossing island. And we're going today. In 2020, the fact that politicians have their own Animal Crossing islands is just, you know, top tier content. Joe Biden actually sat down and crafted this island by himself. So I'm, I, I'm hoping you guys are ready to see all the hard work that Joe Biden himself has put into designing this. <gasps> Apologies everyone for putting you through that pain. That's nothing in comparison to this change that Nintendo made. I will be getting ComboCon to read out the article. Apologies for the audio before continuing. New Animal Crossing rules prohibit Joe Biden's island. Animal Crossing New Horizons popularity has inspired people to use the lifestyle simulator in all sorts of novel ways, like becoming a marketing tool for businesses and organizations. So on Wednesday night, along with the game's big winter update, Nintendo released some new guidelines for organizations riding the game's success. There are things you might expect. You can't, for instance, make anything that could be considered offensive or vulgar. Rules like these, Nintendo says, are meant to preserve the experience for the millions of people enjoying the game recreationally. And then there's this. Please also refrain from bringing politics into the game. Curiously, the new content guidelines also say that you cannot use Animal Crossing as a marketing platform that directs people to activities or campaigns outside the game, including directing people to a sales page, distributing coupons, sweepstakes, giveaways, requiring consumers to follow social network services, accounts, gathering customers information or invitational activities. Polygon reached out to Nintendo for clarification, but based on the most straightforward reading of these rules, things like using Animal Crossing for a political campaign that encourages people to go out and vote, as Joe Biden's campaign did earlier this year, are no longer allowed. Groups that break these rules, Nintendo says, might be asked to stop disseminating their content, if not be outright prohibited from future business usage of the game. Given that Joe Biden has already won the campaign, some of these consequences might be moot. Still, Polygon has reached out to Joe Biden's team to see if Nintendo has gotten in contact over the new rules. For now, Biden's Island Dream address is still active. We were able to visit as of Wednesday night. Joe Biden, of course, isn't the only person to have used Animal Crossing as a marketing tool, or even as a vehicle for politics. Previously, the game has been embraced by Chinese players to stage in-game protests. Used as a virtual meeting place for Black Lives Matter rallies and utilized by politicians like US Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to make house calls, under the new rules, some of these things may no longer be allowed, at least if you're representing a business, organization, or group. Well, unless if you have Nintendo's blessing, the rules also say any business use of the game that exceeds the rules set forth herein shall be permitted only with the separate and express written permission of Nintendo. Unlucky for the Joe Biden campaign, they really got destroyed by Nintendo there. This really affects no one except for the campaign. Well, it doesn't really affect the campaign because Joe Biden already won. 
which leads us to what happened later that year in November on the 8th. Celebrate Joe Biden tonight and get ready to continue the fight tomorrow. Let's have a look at this quick video that Greg Miller had made for us. And so again, uh, we've been 100% behind Joe Biden's campaign. Not that he will fix everything. And I don't even need to be on this soapbox right now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, because guess what? America decided in a very tight race, which is a completely different ball of wax and another conversation to have that Joe Biden is our president. Guess what? Donald Trump did not make America great again. In fact, he made it worse. This right here basically summarizes everything that Greg Miller was going to say. This is where this part ends and we go on to how he doesn't respect his audience. what we expected of our community. Namely, if you're gonna be a jerk, we don't want your view, subscription, or money. This isn't a place for you. Over the years, we've never wavered from that stance, but we also haven't been as vocal about it as we should have. This weekend, a number of abusers across multiple industries were outed by their brave survivors. A few of these abusers had, at one time, been a part of the Kinda Funny community. This started a number of conversations about how we, at Kinda Funny, aren't doing enough to support the members of our community who aren't straight white males. We wanna be better. And that starts with being clear about who we are and what our expectations are of our community. Kind of Funny is a community for everyone who wants to celebrate games, movies, and Oreos while respecting their fellow community members. If you don't believe that black lives matter, that trans, live ma trans lives matter, that all genders are equal, that racism is fucking stupid, that LGBTQ plus rights are human rights, and that it's our duty to be better to each other and make the world a better place, Kind of Funny is not for you. But believing isn't enough. Being good to each other comes with action. That means not attacking each other in comments when you disagree. That means not harassing women in our community. And that even means calling out others when you see this kind of bad behavior and course correcting. This is a rallying cry to all kind of funny fans. The time for us to be silent and quote, not feed the trolls is over because our silence looks like we don't support our targeted community members and that we accept the toxic parts of our community as our community. We do not. This letter alone won't fix things overnight. We all need to work together and, even more importantly, listen to each other. Engage in discussions about this topic. But check your defensiveness at the door. Listen, emphasize, God, I screwed up, empathize, uh, and act. That's what we're doing on this side of the screen, as well as taking, I'm sorry, as long as, as well as talking with and working alongside mods on our community run channels to make these spaces feel more open and welcoming to everyone. That's how we support each other, like best friends would. This clip here shows that you have to have a certain opinion for Greg Miller to have respect for you. All the qualities that he said that the person must have are all agreeable, except for the one about all genders are equal. I know that sounds really based, but in physicality, they are not. But both genders should have the same rights. The next piece of evidence will be read out by Master Panda. Go subscribe to him. His brand and its employees explicitly tell people they aren't welcome to be fans if they're on the right. This was a controversy not even three weeks ago. Since people were finding out about Greg Miller not caring about his audience, he got Lucas Egan to defend him. Kinda Funny co-founder Greg Miller values connection with audience. By Lucas Egan, Las Vegas Review Journal. October the 15th, 2020. And the article was re-updated the same day. Greg Miller doesn't like to describe his followers as fans. Instead, he calls them his best friends. While that may be a buzzword for some. For Miller, co-founder of Kinda Funny, it's how he's operated his entire career. By listening in on me hanging out with my friends, you get to know me in a way that people I would consider my real life best friends. My parents don't know me, Miller said. You get into such a minutiae. Spelled wrong, forgetting the E. How sad. On somebody soul, and even though I don't get to hear the person who's telling me the same information, I understand the connection we have. Miller's path towards starting Kinda Funny began early. I was in 4th grade and I had an issue of Gamer Pro magazine and on the cover was the death and return of Superman and on the inside was a maximum carnage, Miller said. I read it cover 
to cover every night for the first month I had it. It was then that Miller had a revelation. It finally dawned on me that an adult got paid to write these words, Miller said. So I snatched the magazine and I walked into the kitchen and my mum was cooking and I said, Mum, I figured out what I want to do with my life. I want to write about video games. After graduating from college with a journalism degree, that's a big old mate. Miller thought he was set and that gaming publications would welcome him with open arms. Turns out it was a little more difficult than that. Miller applied to multiple publications, including 12 times at IGN. Nobody would touch me with a nine foot pole, Miller said. Instead of writing about video games, Miller found himself as a general assignment reporter at a local newspaper. After a year at a local paper, Miller started writing a video game column and kept a daily blog going. I begged and begged and begged, Miller said. They gave me a column in their magazine, insert. It was a matter of they still think I'm a general assignment reporter covering everything and anything. Now I'm their video game journalist and they don't know it. Six months after starting this column, he applied to IGN for the 13th time since graduating from college. This time, things were different. I got contacted, interviewed and hired within 24 hours. So overnight my dreams came true, Miller said. When Miller arrived at IGN in 2007 in addition to his writing duties, he started appearing on camera and was one of the founding members of Beyond IGN's PlayStation podcast. During this time at IGN, Miller established himself as a writer and a podcast and video host and began to stand out for the way he married games and his personal life in his work. I write the way I would talk to my best friend in my basement about games, Miller said. To this day, that's how I podcast. I've learned the sacred space we inhabit with people. I'm with you for your best times and I'm with you for your worst. That has gone both ways with Miller, sharing his highlights and lows, including a divorce from his first wife and battling cancer. In both instances, it was never a question of whether to share his struggles. It all goes back to Superman and being truthful, Miller said. I couldn't ever lie to my audience. I know so many people use authenticity or best friends and say it's all buzzwords and marketing. Legitimately, the only commodity we have is authenticity and being ourselves. When the bad started to come out like the divorce or cancer, it was never a, even a question. While Miller loved IGN in 2012, he started a YouTube channel that would eventually become kinda funny. At first, he made videos with some of his IGN co-workers as a way to learn how to use Adobe Premiere and make dumb videos. But things began to change and before long, they started making money off the channel. In summer of 2014, we had a meeting, Miller said. It was this conversation of could we do this full time, could we break away, we said everyone go home and come back with the number you need to survive, which is paying your rent, paying your car and your eating ramen noodles. The numbers they returned with didn't give them hope. It was a universal oof, okay maybe in a year and a half to two years we'll be able to make this, Miller said. Two months later, things would change drastically. I went to another VidCon, Miller said. On the way there, Tim showed me an article on Patreon and said, when we get back, we should look into it. While at VidCon, some fans began ch chatting with them. One of them had a Patreon shirt on. I'm like, oh gosh, you know the Patreon guys, Miller said. One of them is like, yeah, I'm the vice president. After meeting with Patreon, they launched their first Patreon in August of 2014. Within 24 hours, Patreon supporters had pledged $10,000 for the first month. In January 2015, Miller, Colin Moriarty, Nick Scarpino, 
And Tim Geddes left IGN to work on Kinda Funny full-time. Kinda Funny now has nine full-time employees, but this goal isn't to build a large company. He wants to continue making content that connects with his audience. The same goal he's had since the day he started. We're not trying to explode, Miller said. That's not where our power is. Our power is our personal connection to our audience. It's the same story as it was on January the 5th. 2015. We're not building this for you, we're building this with you. This finishes our final part, now we're on to the conclusion. We'll be starting off the conclusion with Master Panda reading out some tweets that I found interesting. Greg Miller and Kinda Funny have partnered with Joe Biden campaign to show the Biden Island in Animal Crossing. Today's newsletter is all about games internet celebrity Game Over Greggy and his lurch towards political activism. All this evidence leads me to believe this one conclusion, that Greg Miller never cared about his fan base. He only put on an image so he could manipulate them into voting for Joe Biden. And the whole stunt he pulled on Joe Biden's island was just a publicity stunt to get more views for his dying channel. But he was never in it for the money, which was shown during the live stream on Joe Biden Island. Another point is he doesn't respect anyone who has an opposite opinion to what he has. Evident on the podcast episode, let's talk about everything going on. Kinda Funny Podcast Episode 76. I would like to hear what everyone else thinks in the comments. Thank you everyone for watching. And I would like to thank the people who collaborated with me, which was Combo Con and Master Panda. Fun fact, this entire video was made after looking at one of my oldest video essays I've made. The project went from a 7 long minute to a, a roughly 35 minute long video. I also want to thank the people who have supported me making this video. And I hope to see you all in the next video essay. Oh wait, I was forgetting something. In the original version of this video, I made this dank video in it. I'll be bringing it back with a few differences. Good evening everyone. I'm here tonight to present the award for favorite trending gamer. Streaming channels have literally changed our industry as fans have become leading influencers with their honest, absurd, and sometimes colorful takes on the games we all love. Here are tonight's nominees. The ridiculous is how I would describe it, and yet it's actually surprisingly competitive. Oh, bollocks. Why did Bruh. I buy this game? Why'd that happen? What happened to me? Calm down, it ain't a real prayer, and don't get offensive. Put your bees in your bonnets. Yeah, you're gonna play it and be really pissed off. My name is Kawaii Jesu Chan, my character. What? Remember, I have not seen these games, but I bet the shit hits the fan at this next dragon fight. Oops. Okay, now this one. This one was selected by all the fans, and. To, tonight's award goes to, for Trending Gamer, Greg Miller.